Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And we have a special guest here with us on the State of the Saints podcast from Dynasty Owner Fantasy Sports. We got Tim Peffer. How you doing, Tim? I'm doing great, TJ. Thanks for having me. Man, thank you so much for being a part of the State of the Saints podcast. And for the Who That Nation, for the last couple of days, uh, we've been talking a little bit about Dynasty Owner mm -hmm fantasy sports uh here on the state of the saints podcast and some of the things that you all do but before we get started just tell everybody for those that didn't check out the promo exactly what dynasty owner is all about hmm. the short and sweet version of it is uh we created dynasty owner because even though we love fantasy sports over the years as it became more mainstream mm -hmm. it became more about who could get to the waiver wire the fastest and how lucky you could get with your draft pick, right? If I get maybe a top three pick and get one of the best running backs and, you know, win my league. And so we were like, okay, it's really rewarding luck and not rewarding skill. Right. And man, it's really not realistic. I'm a Browns <laughs> fan and I'm sure there was some, actually saints. You guys have had amazing, amazing years. And I've rooted for you guys and gotten robbed in some NFC championship. <laughs> but I'm just saying there's many years as a Browns fan that I would love to wipe the slate clean. But it's not <laughs> realistic, right? And I'm right. sure as a Saints fan, there's probably been some years pre-Drew Brees that you mm. would have wanted to oh, yeah. uh, wipe the slate clean. But it just doesn't happen. Right. You know, you have contracts and you're keeping players, hopefully – for a long time, just like right. you guys wrapped up Michael Thomas in a long-term deal. So, mm -hmm. you know, so we said, you know what, let's, there's a, there is a segment of the fantasy uh, community that wants to really feel what it's like to be a GM and to run an NFL franchise. So we created right. Dynasty Owner. We use a salary cap. We use actual player contracts and you have a startup draft. And then guess what you're doing? having a rookie draft every year, just like the NFL. And that's what makes Dynasty Owner unique. Yeah, that definitely uh, sounds unique because, I mean, look, I think all of us in, in a way are GMs, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> how many well, we times? We're smarter than, a, than, the, than the GM, right? Exactly. I would have re-signed this guy. Why didn't I make trade for him? Yes. Why didn't uh, – I can't believe that other team signed him to that deal. We should have signed him. Like, exactly. it would have filled our, our hole, you know. Our D-line would be – yeah, it's just – yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, like that's what, what these podcasts and, and, and shows are all about, right? You know, what we could have done better. And, and what you all are offering, you know, gives fans the opportunity to actually live there. That's pretty That's pretty cool right there. But let's go ahead and backtrack. Like, I, how long ago did you all come up with this idea? I mean, you talked a little bit about where it came from, but – how long ago did this 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 actually happen? You start to put the plans and work to in order for D Dynasty owner to actually be a real thing. Okay, so I'm going to try to make this long story short. Paul, <laughs> who is a co-founder, he um, originally came up with the idea. Oh, close to about eight nine years ago, mm -hmm. he almost bought, and we're completely self funded, which is awesome. We don't right. have investors to answer to. We're making the features that people want versus, and we actually build a community. So we, yeah. you can give us direct feedback, what you want to see on our platform right. and we create it mm -hmm. versus, you know, you're never getting a hold of anybody at any of the big platforms to yeah. whether you have a problem or want to give them an idea. But, mm -hmm. you know, Paul, um, so we're self-funded. Paul 
had almost purchased a piece of the Miami Heat right before wow. LeBron. And we're Cleveland fans, but <laughs> he still, it was a good deal. He was working on it, and um, he decided not to go through with it because the owner had changed some uh, changed some of the um, the minority owner's docs and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So mm-hmm. they were like, man, he had a friend who was just like, you are – huge sports fan you almost you were this close to owning um you know a minority ownership in a sports franchise how come right. you don't play fantasy sports and he's like you know what he's like because fans <laughs> like us All right um always are like questioning things but never taking contracts into you know um, consideration he's like it's just not realistic he's right. like i don't want to play it he's like right. it's a business like sports Yes, we want to all win, but there's business sides to it that make that happen. Mm-hmm. And so he was like, and they were like, really? That's why you don't play? And there's like, yeah. And he's like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna create a game. So the ball had started rolling, and then you know, there was like development issues and things like that. Mm-hmm. And I had worked with Paul on some other stuff, and about three years ago, uh, we decided to resurrect it and started building it. Right. Yeah, and so here we are. We're we're moving into a third season. We had two beta seasons, and this is going to be our our um our first launch. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that sounds really exciting. I mean for him to put that type of dream on, especially on the Miami Heat. I mean how incredible would that be? You know, all those successful years they have there, great fan base. Uh, you know, the playoff contender every single year. Yeah. Just recently went to the finals before. You know, I mean last year. So. I mean, that would have been a dream, but I mean, just working on Dynasty Owner and bringing this into fruition, I mean, it, it, it has to be a dream come true. Actually watching something that uh, you, you believe in, that you you created and actually bringing it to life. And you say you guys are going into your, th- your third year yeah. um, at, at Dynasty Owner. But yeah. just t- uh-huh. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so what we decided to do was we wanted to have some beta seasons and really, first of all, like test the platform. Do people want to play the game? That's what we did the first year. Right. And we had this overwhelming response. And then last year we said, okay, let's build the mobile. And we built the desktop version in 2019, 2020. Mm-hmm. Right. We built the mobile app. And so we were just like testing it. And so it has just really taken off. So really for your listeners, for – um you know the state of the saints nation here they uh they're really going to get a mature product if this Mm -hmm. is your first time hearing it it's not like we just created this yesterday we created it and tested it and implemented feedback from our beta groups on what they wanted to see yeah uh, definitely but since we uh, you know talk about fantasy football and what you all do let's just talk a little bit about uh some players and we'll even start with the cleveland browns last year you know, you guys in the divisional round, look, you guys had a, a heck of a run in the playoffs. Uh, yeah. and unfortunately, it ended the way that it did. You know, and come on, man. Chad <laughs> Henney, man. <laughs> I thought for sure, like, first off, you I thought like, it, it was, it was, it was so tailored made for y'all to win that football game, man. And it, it's, it's unfortunate because I definitely was rooting for you all uh, to win that game. But you know what, though? I, Obviously, I could say we we're this close or this close. Mm-hmm. We didn't get robbed like you guys got robbed mm-hmm. in previous NFC championships. We it, our situation. I mean, come on. If Mahomes didn't get hurt, mm-hmm. um, we were probably getting throttled. You know, I mm-hmm. mean, maybe not completely throttled, but because we do, we do have a great run game. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, our defense last year, anybody could throw over the middle on us. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a hard thing to stop. And that's why Chad Henney can yeah. come out and light us up. So, mm-hmm. you know, what are you going to do? I mean, I, I don't even want to say it lit, lit you all up. I mean, uh, he threw an interception that was late in the game. Yeah. It was just, you know, the, it was just that run that they wasn't expecting. I mean, nobody expected no. Chad Henney to run. I mean, no. everybody expected for, you know, them probably try to get a few yards and maybe punt the ball back to you all on that but, third or 13. So but I, we went, we struck, we had the ball. Mm-hmm. before that drive and just could not get a first down yeah and so it's it's nobody's fault but ours should never get to that point you know yeah i mean but that's something that you all can build on i mean it's a young team um i feel like you're going to get better um as, as time go on and i mean those cornerbacks that that you all have and grant Delpit, uh he missed the entire season so you exactly. should be there to help out 
So, I mean, you're, you're all going to have some guys that are going to come in that's going to help out that team tremendously. Yeah, but let, let's look at let's look at it from a, a fantasy standpoint. Let's look at uh, somebody like Jarvis Landry. Uh, what kind of season do you think that he would have, like when it comes to from from a fantasy perspective? Yeah, so I mean, I love Jarvis Landry. I think he is um, one of the most underrated receivers in the NFL and also in fantasy. I think right. people don't look at him the same way that they look at Devontae Adams and Michael Thomas and, you know, DK Metcalf and uh, AJ Brown. They don't and Julio Jones, they don't look at him like that and and he doesn't put up quite that production, you know. Right. And of course, OBJ gets the most attention right. um, you know, as far as Browns receivers, but you know, I like Jarvis Landry because I mean, he gets receptions. So if you're in a PPR league in fantasy, mm -hmm. I feel like uh, he's a guy that you can target. In late, If you're in a redraft league, I right. think you can target him in late rounds and you can get a really good um, a really good receiver that's going to help you win some games, especially going through the bye weeks. In Dynasty Owner, it's mm -hmm. a little different because you're using actual player contracts and he's $15 million a year. Right. Um, but the one thing you can see in Dynasty Owner, uh, this is a little strategy. If any of the uh, states of the uh, you know state state of the of Saints Saint, yeah. <laughs> listeners decide to play, is you can target some of the lower contract guys. Rookie contracts is really what drives the NFL league to be competitive, yeah. but also mm -hmm. in Dynasty Owner too. So getting quarterbacks, running backs under the rookie contract is huge, and so you can target. Jarvis Landry, I'll, I'll actually tell you what his ADP is right now. Yeah, yeah um, go ahead. I own him in, in one of uh, in one of my leagues mm -hmm. um, on Dynasty Owner, and that's just because of just the value that I think he brings. Mm -hmm. So, give me one second here. You know, okay. his is uh, his ADP, like I said, is is a little bit later mm -hmm. in uh, in Dynasty Owner just because of his contract. Right now, he is going in. It looks like he's going about the 15th round. Hmm. Only about 50% owned as well in wow. Dynasty Owner. And, and you know, I feel like he can uh, – he's a guy that can help you um, hmm. just because of his production. I mean, this year he's projected for about 91 receptions, 1,025 yards. Hmm. And, um, you know, he's going to get some – he's going to get a few touchdowns in that red zone. Yeah. You know, last year – uh, last year he had 72 receptions, 840 yards and three touchdowns, mm -hmm. but he didn't have OBJ. And I think OBJ helps him, you know, yeah. OBJ being missed for that second half of the season. Yeah. Um, if, if OBJ was there, I think it helps, it helps Baker. And I think it helps Landry. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt about it. You know, I think that Jarvis Landry to me, one of the most underrated receivers in the league. I just think that a lot of people, don't really value him as much. I mean, when he was in Miami, I mean, he was a pass catching machine. Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, mean, I think he's going to have a big year. Uh, speaking of big years, you know, we're talking about this, uh, this is a state of the Saints podcast. We have to mention Michael Thomas. Uh, last year, he was in and out of the lineup, didn't have any touchdowns last season due to the ankle injury he sustained in week one versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, we mentioned him earlier about his contract, but, uh, what what type of value uh, do you feel Michael Thomas will bring to fantasy owners, uh, you know, that dynasty owner this year? I mean, so I think it depends on who you think your quarterback is. Mm. And, um, you know, is it Jameis Winston? Then mm. I think Michael Thomas is going to do really well. Mm. Um, you know, even though Jameis Winston, um, you know, has had – some interceptions issues in, in Tampa in the past. Mm -hmm. I think if it's Jameis Winston, I think that you're going to probably see a big year out of Michael Thomas, mm -hmm. probably very similar to his 2019 season. I mean, mm -hmm. 2019, he had 149 receptions, 1,725 yards, nine touchdowns. Of course, last year he struggled. Yeah. He, uh, you know, he, he did give you a couple of good games though. Mm -hmm. Last year in 2020, he had mm -hmm. nine receptions, 105 yards in week 13 against Atlanta. He had eight receptions, 84 yards 
uh, in week 14 against Philadelphia. And I think you're going to see a lot of games like that mm. with Jameis because Jameis is going to throw to him. Yeah. Now, I mean, what are you thinking? So you tell me about your – what do you think your quarter, your state of your quarterback is? Well, uh, we, we have this debate quite a bit, Tim, on this show. Uh, <laughs> but uh, me, I, if I'm, a, if I'm a, a betting man, I would say that Jameis Winston most likely would be the starter. Uh, you have some uh, Taysom Hill uh, supporters here. But um, to me, I think Jameis is the most likely – uh he's he's the most likely choice because i think a lot of people fall in love with Taysom because what they're seeing out there in baltimore with lamar jackson they kind of put those two together you know Taysom ability to run outside the pocket the read option what have you but i don't think that that's going to work especially when you have a, a guy like sean payton who likes to throw the football they're not he's not going to want to see his uh, quarterback leave the pocket as much as Taysom will. So here's Jameis Winston. This is why I'm a believer in Michael Thomas having a great year if it's Jameis Winston. Mm -hmm. Jameis Winston's stats from 2019, 50 100 yards passing, mm -hmm. 380 completions with 626 attempts. They threw the ball a lot, but he right. had a 60.7% completion ratio, right. 33 passing touchdowns, he also had a rushing touchdown. He ran it for 59 times, 250 yards. Yeah. Uh, his issue was the 30 interceptions and the 12 yeah. fumbles. You can't have your quarterback turning over the ball 42 times, and I yeah. think that's why he didn't get a starting quarterback job last year. He didn't get signed. Mm -hmm. right. Can the Saints correct it? Man, I'm hopeful. Yep. I'm really hopeful for, with that for Jameis because I think he is talented as heck. I think mm -hmm. the Saints are getting a steal. And, oh, by the way, in Dynasty Owner, he's under a one-year, $5.5 million contract. You can – right now he is getting drafted 118.9 overall. So you can target him near that 10th round as your backup quarterback. And I think – you could come away destroying your league if he puts up 2019 numbers. Hmm. That's interesting. I was I definitely was going to ask you that question about Jameis Winston, you know, for the for the uh, dynasty owner, uh, you know, uh, users out there, would it be a smart decision to have uh Jameis, you know, to draft him because I I'm, I mean I want to take a shot. I want to yeah. take a shot on him if if um if the Saints coaching staff can help Jameis correct those issues, get him back to really 2019 positive numbers mm. and uh, reduce those, those turnovers. Then I think um, the saints are a playoff team. And I think Jameis um, helps you win your fantasy leagues. Uh, he'll sure help you win your dynasty owner league. And I think Michael Thomas has an amazing year for the you know for the Saints and in all your fantasy leagues and he's getting drafted just late later than you know we're talking a guy in dynasty owner drafts in 2020 mm -hmm. where he was he was our number one receiver if I go look at his his career numbers he was the number one receiver in uh 2019 right um talking you know, to michael in, thomas yeah michael thomas in dynasty mm -hmm. owner he was our eighth overall best player i mean he put up a ton of points his adp was 12 he was getting drafted at the back end of the first round yeah. okay and then but he paid he gave you great production 2020 he was getting drafted 14.2 right at the early part of the second round of course we know his injuries last year Right now, he's getting drafted 100.6. Now, he's mm. got a big contract, 19.2 mil. Right. But if he's getting, giving you the amazing production and you're able to couple that um, with some cheaper contracts and some rookie contracts and you can get him back to his production, it's great. Like, that's a great steal. You yeah. know, that's another guy that you're drafting ninth, tenth round in Dynasty Owners platform. So I, I'm just a believer in if Winston and they can stick with him, not if they're having Winston and Taysom Hill share. I, I don't I don't think that benefits. I don't see how it benefits a team. Maybe we've seen some things like where people will do some like wildcat stuff back in the day and some gimmick <laughs> stuff. And there was like what one great year with Miami when Ricky yep. Williams was there. Yeah, Ronnie and, Brown. Uh, with, Ronnie with, Brown. Ronnie yeah, Brown, yeah, exactly. Where they, <laughs> where they had, um, 
they had a little bit of success. Did they mm-hmm. win the Super Bowl over it? Did they win multiple playoff games no. doing that? I don't no. think so. Maybe it got the Dolphins excited. Yeah. So I don't know. Does it excite you as a Saints fan to see Taysom Hill come in and, and do his thing and maybe run the ball and throw it a little bit? Does that excite you guys? Uh, yeah, because I, I, at – at the time, I mean, Drew Brees was winding down his career. He couldn't get the ball down the field anymore. Yeah. So it was necessary. Um, I think that they probably are going to have to uh, remove a couple plays because they don't they wouldn't need Taysom anymore because you don't have to worry about, you know, can Jameis throw the ball down the field? I mean, Jameis has a cannon for an arm. So I think that some of the things that Taysom was brought in to do uh, probably wouldn't be necessary anymore. Now, it does give you a level of excitement because there's some 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 plays he actually did better than Drew. But um I think that uh if I'm a betting man, I think that some of his uh duties are probably gonna be lax if uh Jameis comes in because they won't need that. Uh, yeah. my final question for you, uh Tim. Um uh, this is a player that 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 always a fantasy darling, Alvin Kamara. I mean, last year he Love had him. six six touchdowns in one game. So with Dynasty owner, would it be a smart decision to draft this guy like the first round? Because, I mean, yeah. this guy single-handedly won week one fantasy football for people. <laughs> yeah, so he's still getting drafted in the first round in Dynasty owner. His ADP sure. right now is 10.6. He's getting wow. drafted about the back end of the first round. Mm-hmm. Now, coming and looking at his career numbers, mm-hmm. in 2018, mm-hmm. um, under the Dynasty owner scoring, he would have been fourth overall. Um, I'm wow. so, yeah, sorry, fourth as a running back position. Uh, in 2019, his ADP was five. He had a position rank, uh, he was the 11th best running back, but that was because I mean, he just he just had, yeah, exactly. So, anyway, 7.7 was his ADP in 2020, mm-hmm. and he finished as the number one running back in mm-hmm. in on, on the dynasty owner platform. So, yeah, you're right, he had just an absolute great year. Last year, um, that six touchdown game. Let's see, that was uh, that was against Minnesota, Minnesota. right? Week yep. sixteen on, Chris- on Christmas Day. Yeah, I mean, he had fifty eight point two fantasy points that day. That's insane. I mean, he absolutely won you probably your championship game. Yep, <laughs> and so you can't go wrong with it. But he's just so consistent. This mm-hmm. is what I love about him. So with all the injuries to your got to the Saints last year, mm-hmm. maybe the struggles with Drew Brees, he had double digit points in 15 out of 16 weeks. So if you were looking at some consistency rankings, um, only the game against Denver in week 12 did he struggle, mm-hmm. you know, but yeah. he only had 11 carries that game. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of weeks he had 11 carries, but he also had some receptions and he got in the end zone. Yeah. It just was a week where they only threw it to him once, mm-hmm. you know, and he only had 11 carries. If they probably gave it to him more, I don't know. I didn't watch that Denver game, so I'm just looking at the stats on paper. Mm-hmm. You know, he gave you double-digit fantasy points every single week in 2020. Yeah. yeah. So. Most likely, Tim, he probably would have given him double digits. But, you know, that was during a time when uh, the Denver entire quarterback room ended up, uh, you know, I, I don't know if they test positive for COVID, but close contact yeah. or something. And they had to get the wide receiver to play quarterback. So the Saints basically yeah. just, you know, used Latavius Murray quite a bit in that game uh, yeah. in order for them just to try to get up out of there. So I definitely uh, agree with you when it comes to Alvin Kamara. I, me personally, I think he'll be a first pick overall. He'll win a lot of people a so, lot of games. <laughs> so only because of the contract. So right. his contract is fifteen million per year. Right. You know, and you're going to have him in Dynasty Owner through the 2025 season. So that's right. a great thing. Like you with Dynasty Owner, not only are you getting that fi- fifteen million dollar contract for this mm-hmm. year, you're keeping him through the 2025 season. You have first right to refuse him um like if he were to get another contract extension or anything like that and we let you so here's the hard thing about dynasty owner i'm going to come back to alvin Kamara. the hard thing about it is um you know when you draft a guy like alvin Kamara, you can't get out with under his contract without a penalty so you get charged 25 percent of the remaining contract Mm -hmm. if you cut that guy 
And so mm -hmm. there's a penalty there for you, um, which means that you really have to think twice about who you're going to draft, who you're going to have on your team. Mm -hmm. I think Alvin Kamara is worth it. Yep. Now, you can get into the nitty gritty of the contract and there's some player options to get out of, you know, for the player options to get out and team options to get out where almost never do you see a contract completed all the way because hmm. extensions happen. If the player is out producing their contract right. or you'll see the situations like Le'Veon Bell. And I don't believe Alvin Kamara is Le'Veon Bell, but here Le'Veon Bell went to the Jets and he's 12 right. million a year. And then he just didn't produce. They're like, right. see you later, you know, and he ended up going to the Chiefs for, you know, like 1.2 mil. Right. So, you know, Alvin Kamara right now, um, we get our projections from Rotowire. And that's right. who we partner with for Dynasty Owner. And right now, they're projecting him to have 954 rushing yards, mm -hmm. 16 touchdowns, mm -hmm. 80 receptions, 735 mm -hmm. yards, and give you 344 fantasy points. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're projected to have four. He, I will tell you this, he has outperformed his projections from previous years. Um Right now, overall, people have been – and the reason why I would say Kamara's not number one is just how friendly Jonathan Taylor's rookie contract is for the good Colts. Good he had a good, and then you're going to have him for three years, and it's just really cheap contract, and that's why people are taking him. And then the rookie quarterback contracts are really friendly, so people want Kyler Murray. Um Josh Allen is still have one year left on his rookie deal. Mm -hmm. And those are quarterbacks that, you know, I'll, I'll give you an example. Pat Mahomes in our platform is 45 million a year. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what his average annual salary is. Right. People still have Pat Mahomes. I still think he's, his juice is worth the squeeze, right. but Josh Allen has got one more year left and he is at 5.2 million. Yep. And you have a salary cap and dynasty owner of 127 million. Yep. So Pat Mahomes is a third of your salary cap versus Josh Allen, 5.5 mil, 127. So um, I think moving back to Camara, 15 million, he's uh, a little under, you know, he's about 10%. Okay. Right. I know that's not the exact number, but he's about 10% of your cap. But mm -hmm. you have to have running backs that produce, he's one that produces. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if he slides uh, into you at number four, then you're going to take him and you're going to be happy. Yeah. I mean, Jonathan Taylor, I mean, that's that's, that's a really good running back, too. And a nice yeah. young running back that that uh, that produces quite a bit as well. And I think going into the second year it might even be better. Uh, but but it, it, I, I like I like Dynasty owner so much because you have so many people like you we mentioned at the beginning. Um like they tell you, why we can't get this guy? Why we can't get this guy? It seems like Dynasty Owner is teaching individuals not only for them to have a, a good time and enjoy your, your platform and what you're doing, but also have to give them the understanding about how the salary cap works. And I think probably when they, yeah. they leave uh, Dynasty Owner, when they're talking about football now, I think they'll have a better appreciation for the players they have totally. and totally. the general managers and what the decisions that they have to make. So I, I love that. So you know, on our, platform, on our mm -hmm. platform, it's all offense. We don't have any defensive players or any mm -hmm. defensive teams, uh, which is something that was feedback, by the way. We were going to do uh, – we were going to we, – we came to our users. So I'll tell you about how great our platform is mm -hmm. uh, in this sense that we love the feedback and we love right. that community, okay? Right. You really don't get that on other platforms. Um, and so – we approached them and said, do you want team defense, our beta group, or do you want IDP? Mm -hmm. And it was split where 60% said, um, I mean, it was about like 51 to 50. And we were like, okay, this oh. is really 51 to 49. This is mm -hmm. really close. Uh, but then the feedback they were saying is like, listen, we really want no defense. So, <laughs> so then we redid the poll again, and it was like 60% no defense. And then it was split the 40% between team defense and IDP. And they said, okay, if it really matters to you guys that much, we won't have defense. So we are 70% of the NFL salary cap and we mm -hmm. use offensive players only. We have deep rosters where you can roster up to 30 players. Mm -hmm. And so it makes it, it does make it difficult. 
the decisions you're faced with, not only when you're drafting. So we do a snake draft, not an auction, a snake draft. And you're working within the constraints of the salary cap as you draft. And then what makes it really hard is um, year two when you go, because you're going to have expiring contracts. You're going to have right. guys getting contract extensions. You're making room for your rookies, just like the NFL franchises do. Mm -hmm. And you're faced with tough decisions. Like I, I lost to Sean Watson in one of my leagues because mm. – his contract was going up to 39 million. Right. And I could not, I just couldn't afford him anymore. Mm. And, you know, cause I had some great receivers that I had under long-term contracts. And I was like, I can't get rid of them. <laughs> um, and so I just couldn't make it work. I yeah. couldn't make it work. So, mm. you know, those are tough decisions you're faced with. And then we have an annual rookie draft and you're using the constraints of the salary cap there as well. But trades is what really makes it interesting yeah. because, um, you're trading draft picks uh, for future years. You also, um, you know, each and every trade, you're considering your salary cap, their salary cap, and you're trying to put that puzzle together. And so you'll almost see some NBA like trades sometimes <laughs> where I got to send a guy to you to like take cap and you're sending a guy back. Maybe I don't really want to get cap, but maybe it's a guy that I'll cut because he's under an expiring contract and the right. penalty's not that much. And so there's so many things to figure out. And yeah, it does give you an appreciation, um, you know, for the game. And so when I'm watching football and uh, when I'm watching a game and I'm like, oh, okay, like that guy makes this amount per year, this guy makes this amount per year. And then I'll start thinking about, man, how is that team going to be competitive over the next few years? And I think of like the Chiefs, like this is their last year. I think this is their last year to do anything. They've had so many uh, – they have so many superstars. They've yeah. already had to cut offensive linemen, and then they yeah. were able to – they were able to um, sign a couple of sneaky guys, yeah. I would say, you know, getting Orlando Brown and getting um, Long out of retirement and things mm -hmm. of that nature. I don't know how that's going to work, but they, def they deferred some of Pat Mahomes' contract. Right. And that's going to come to a head. And so I think this is – I think they'll always be good mm -hmm. going forth. The Chiefs, for as long as Pat Mahomes is quarterback, they're going to be good. Yeah. But they will absolutely go into some rebuilding mm -hmm. and will be a good team but not a Super Bowl team. I think this is their last opportunity to, to do it. So we'll yeah. see what happens. I mean, I could yeah. be completely wrong, but when you start looking at numbers and you're looking at how it's adding up and their team structure, you're just like, okay. And that's the same things you face in Dynasty Owner. Yeah, I mean, Dynasty Owner definitely uh, gives you that that real GM feel. You know, that de definitely yeah. does. And you all have done an outstanding job of creating this. And I think that people, once again, are going to have an appreciation for well, general managers everywhere. <laughs> Here's something I never even told you, and this is what's crazy. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, – we, like I said, we listen to the people that play our platform and plus we watch and we're just very involved. Like we'll do some live streams mm -hmm. where we'll get on and just answer questions and talk to them. We had, own, we have owners meetings in January where we get mm -hmm. on with all the people in a zoom meeting <laughs> and you know, it's like, what do you want to change? And they kind of voted on like, some of the constitution that they want to change. We have this big constitution on how our platforms played. So go to dynastyowner.com and check that out. You can read on that, how our platform, you know, operates and plays. But so a couple of things that we fix for people, mm -hmm. and this was on your read yesterday, right. there, um, there are a lot of leagues. If you're in Twitter and you're in Reddit and there's people saying, Hey, come join my league, come join my league. And then, they the commissioner just folds the league mm -hmm. or folds after a year nobody plays anymore well right. we said okay we're going to be commissioner of all the leagues and we have a team of commissioners and a customer service team like you could email commission at dynasty owner right now you'll get a response probably within about 15 minutes yeah you're not getting that on other platforms and you know whether it's to help you understand the game or you're having an issue or experience a bug we're, we're there to help you um, you can also live chat on our website. So we said, okay, we're going to commission the leagues to make sure that there is fair things going on. And we have teams that um, our team of commissioners are always looking to make sure there's fair play going on. Mm. And so we were like, okay, so that's one problem solved. The second problem is it's a dynasty league. You're keeping these people. You can't have leagues fold. So we have a thing yeah. called an orphan store. Mm -hmm. So if uh, if somebody doesn't renew, doesn't play, we mm -hmm. sell that spot. We cannot keep those teams in the store. Like when we <laughs> when year two came from the paid beta last year to this, right. like people were just going and buying 
buying more teams, buying more teams because they wanted to play. They sold right away. Well, we also give you, this is a problem Dynasty Owner solves. Let's say for some reason, TJ, that um, you can't play. You can't right. play this year. Something's going on. Life happens. Right. It's just not a good year for you. Uh, even though you're a huge football fan, you don't have the time commitment that comes in. In a traditional fantasy league, you just quit. That's yep. it. Does that happen in the NFL? No. No. So <laughs> let's use Jerry Jones as an example. Let's say Jerry Jones doesn't want to own the majority share of the Cowboys. Right. What would he do? Uh, yeah, well, he'll sell it, right? He sells his team. Yeah. So we have it where you can post your team for sale. And there are people that were selling their team for four hundred dollars on our platform four and five hundred dollars so there are some people then that turned it into a business we mm -hmm. weren't we knew that was possible but we right. weren't expecting that to happen this isn't the purpose we build it right we build it, we build it so that way it's like tj um you know you have family stuff going on work stuff going on you can't uh you can't play this year you're able to sell your team or oh and oh by the way you just happen to get into a league with people you don't like because that happens, mm, right? Much. And so instead of you putting your investment in it, because we do charge um, a platform fee and there's entry fees. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have cash prize pools that are sponsored by Team Stakes. So there are cash prize pools that you can come play Dynasty Owner. But, you know, this is ownership, right? So mm -hmm. we want you to have ownership over your team and investment. It's $39 to play Dynasty Owner per year. And we think it's completely worth it because you're yeah. getting a way better experience than you are anywhere else. Plus, you're getting you to, get to actually live like a GM. But then guess what? You could sell your team and get more than your money back out of it. There was people that bought teams and um, you know played last year, mm -hmm. had to build a really great franchise, sold it for four hundred dollars. Yeah. Multiple people did that. Yeah, I know several people that, that deal with the same situation when they try to get these fantasy football leagues started. You know, you'll probably have a brother-in-law or something like that. Played one year. I don't have time. I just started this new job. Oh, we just had this new baby. And, and you you end up like, you know, being on the outside looking in. I'm glad that you all – it, it, it really seems – like Dynasty owner has dotted the I's and crossed the T's of every particular Pretty scenario much. that a person can face, Tim. Um, I'm I'm excited about it. And I know the Who That Nation ones that are watching the State of Saints podcast, I know they're excited about it as well. Tim, one more time, let everybody know how they can get in touch with you and also how they can sign up for Dynasty owner. Yeah. So um, if you ever have any questions at all, commish at dynastyowner.com. We'll be happy to help you answer any questions. So if you're on the fence, need some more questions answered before joining a league, commission dynastyowner.com. If you're ready to take the leap, um, 39 bucks is what it is for this year. And um, if you want to be in a cash prize pool, there's additional, you could put 50 or 100 in and all 100% of that gets paid out. There are virtual prizes with that 39 bucks too, by the way, because you can get enough money to pay you can get enough virtual currency back to pay for your future years. So, by the way, 39 bucks. you go to dynastyowner.com and uh, scroll down about halfway to the page, start my dynasty, and uh, go in there, create your account. You can actually do it from the app, too. You don't even need to go to dynastyowner.com. We have a iOS and Android app. Just download the app in the App Store. Go for it. Once you create your account, you go to the Dynasty Owner store. You can either join um, – you can either buy an existing team – if in an existing league, or you can go and um, and uh, and join one of the upcoming drafts in July or August. Yep. And oh, by the way, if there happens to be a specific draft day and time that you want, um, just email us, Commission Dynasty Owner, and we'll make it happen for you. You know, if you want a private league, we can set that up for you too. So the cool thing about Dynasty Owners too, you don't need twelve people mm. that you or eleven other people that you personally know. Can right. you do that? Absolutely. That makes fantasy fun. Mm -hmm. But you might be saying like, TJ, you might be saying, wow, OK, this is much of a commitment. You know, I mm -hmm. have a hard time getting 11 other guys committed to playing a redraft league, the same ones every year. Right. So you might say, but I have two or three amazing friends that would play with me. So the cool thing is, is you can come and join a league and mm -hmm. invite those friends. And then we market that the vacant spots in that league to the rest of the platform mm -hmm. and those get filled. So you're going to play with diehard people. And this is how we keep the fair weather people out. <laughs> I mean, that's what we do. And, and we do it on purpose. We want to keep the fair weather people out. Right. Um, and that's why we charge, we charge a platform fee 
Um, but like I said, there are virtual prizes you get with it, opportunities for cash prize pool leagues. It's amazing. You know, we have Chase for the Ring. I'll talk about that in a second. But um, yeah, you just come over. Oh, and you get a referral. Every time, every time that you invite somebody to the platform, you get 10 bucks. Oh. So, hmm. you know, it's 39, but um, invite three friends, that's 30 bucks coming your way, you know, yeah. once they join. So, uh, FYI, 10 bucks. And so, lastly, the crazy thing about Dynasty Owner is we said we really want to make an amazing platform wide contest. Yes, you can win your league make mm. the playoffs in your league, mm. but we have something called chase for the ring contest. Mm. And if you go to dynastyowner.com, you'll see Eddie and you'll see Victor, our past two champions in there. They get a Super Bowl ring. I mean, it's 125 grams. It is a $10,000 ring wow. crusted with diamonds and rubies. You can see it on our website. It's amazing. We bring the winner in. So it is the, you have to win your <laughs> league. It is the most efficient champion scores the most points on the mm -hmm. dynasty owner platform we bring you in uh we're in cleveland ohio mm -hmm. we bring you in for for a couple of days take you to the pro football hall of fame mm -hmm. you know you'll get to see all the people from the Houdat nation in the hall of fame you get mm -hmm. your ring presented there it's is absolutely take you to a beautiful steak dinner so um i said we're about doing community and uh, creating a realistic platform for people to have a real GM experience. Yeah, definitely. If you want that real GM experience and even get an opportunity to get that little bling bling, you know, yeah, you want to exactly. sign up <laughs> for dynastyowner.com. And Tim, thank you so much for your time. Really do appreciate it. I know a lot of members of the Who That Nation and, and people that watch the State of the Saints yep. podcast are fired up. Uh, looking forward to having a really good season. And hopefully for Dynasty Owner, it, it is a incredible season for you all, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, we're going to hook you up. We want you playing, TJ. It's going to be so much fun. Um, I'm looking forward to you playing. I'm looking forward to everyone in the Houdat Nation playing. Um, and I'm looking forward to see what your Saints do. I, I really am because, you know. <laughs> Me too. Um, I think if, if we can capture that uh, 2019 version of Jameis Winston, with a few less turnovers, no. you guys are going to have a fun season. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, Sean Payton is not going to allow him to put the ball in there as much as uh, I think um, Bruce Arians did. I think that uh, there's a difference between the coaching um, and also the circumstance that uh, that Jameis was in versus what he's going to be in in New Orleans. So that might be beneficial to him. But I hope I hope I, I, I can't take too much. I think it's a great locker room. Yeah. And I think it's a great team or I think it's a great organization. Like I yeah. think about it and I'm like, all right, um, the Bucks were kind of a mess without Tom Brady. Yeah. It just, it just is. And I, I like Bruce Arians. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, me um, too. I do. I do highly regard Sean Payton and his staff more and your organization more. And so I think it's a good place for him. I think it's a great fit for him. I don't know. I'm just hopeful and I'm an optimist <laughs> and I'd love to see him do well because I think he's a fun player to watch yeah. if they will unleash him. Yeah. Yeah. Between being a Saints fan uh, since I was about four years old and I know you can attest to this as well. Being a Cleveland Brown fan is the best thing to be is optimistic. <laughs> That's it. That's what you got to do. Who's your, who's, your favorite, who's your favorite Saints player of all time? Of all time? Uh that's that Drew Brees. Drew Brees is my favorite be, player of all yeah. time. Yeah. I mean, there, there's been some great players over the years and stuff like uh, Marcus Colston and, and, and guys like that. But Joe Horn? Yeah, Joe Horn. Yeah, Joe Horn was uh, one of those I guys. I remember the, him pulling out the cell phone after the touchdown. <laughs> that celebration, that's the, one of the best things ever. Yeah. What about you before you go? Uh, uh, favorite Cleveland Brown of all time? Bernie Kosar. Okay. All that's right, what Bernie I grew Kosar. up with. Mm hmm yeah, it's definitely Bernie. Uh, Baker is starting to get that kind of iconic status. Mm -hmm. Like there's people, there's Browns fans that regard Bernie like he should be in the Hall of Fame. He didn't put up quite those quite those numbers. He had yeah. he did have some amazing seasons. Mm -hmm. He did have one year that was MVP like, mm -hmm. but um, you know he was a great quarterback, very smart quarterback. Obviously, both yeah. in college, winning national championship with the Hurricanes, but then also, you know, with um, 
you know, with the Browns and, mm-hmm. you know, taking many playoff appearances. So that's what I grew up with. I yeah. think that ends up happening. You know, I grew up, I think uh, for Halloween, like three years in a row, I was mm-hmm. Bernie Kosar growing up. <laughs> and it just stays with you. And there's yeah. been many players that I like, don't get me wrong, but mm-hmm. then we've had a lot of, you know, the Browns left in 95 right. and broke our hearts. And then coming back in 99, it's not the same. And, and yeah. if you ask real Browns fans, uh, when we see the Ravens do well, we're like, you know, yeah. winning Super Bowls were like, that was our Super Bowl, mm-hmm. you know. And a lot of people don't realize when the Browns left in 95, we had Belichick and Saban on our staff. Belichick yeah. was our head coach. Saban was on the staff. Mm-hmm. It just was like, all right, I think if they would, if it would have kept together, uh, the Browns would have would have probably have won a Super Bowl in the late 90s, you know, yeah. keeping that staff and keeping it together. Oh, well, what, what can you do? Yeah. It's, you know, it, it – but – Bernie Kosar fan, Browns fan, and I'm hoping my Browns do well and your Saints do well. Maybe we'll yeah. meet up in the Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, I used to like uh, <laughs> Michael Jackson when he was uh, with you guys, the wide receiver. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> like Michael Jackson. Because, I mean – Great. Yeah. I liked um, mm-hmm. I liked Eric Metcalf was one of my oh, most yeah. favorite players, too. Oh, yeah. I oh, really yeah. loved Eric Metcalf. But, yeah, yeah, that was a fun and exciting time in the 90s, having Metcalf and Michael yeah. Jackson. and mm-hmm. We had Andre Risen for a couple mm-hmm. seasons. Yeah, for a little while. Yeah. I mean, look, the Cleveland Browns were on a, on a come up, you know, when uh, Belichick was there. And I just think that it just took the wind out of the sails. Uh, you know, once everybody found out that they were leaving and stuff like that, yeah. it wasn't the same. And I think that – because, I mean, it was – you all going to be a playoff team. And I just think that when they found out they were moving to Baltimore, it, it just took the wind out of the sails of the players and the fans. And it was and just we, a rough year. Man. And we live in different times. So if you go and you go on YouTube and watch that last Browns game, Browns did win that game. Um, they The last home game they had, the fans ripped the bleachers out of the bleachers stadium. Out, yeah, yeah. Throwing them on the field. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine how many people would be going to jail in this day? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even care. The police just let it happen. You know, yeah. the 90s is crazy. But I mean, uh, because the, I'm pretty sure the police felt the same way. They, they, wish, did, they, they probably could rip out some seats. I mean, that that I feel like that was symbolic. Those seats yeah. rip. They 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 symbolized the heart of Cleveland. The yeah. Cleveland Brown fans everywhere. But I'm, I'm glad you all have a, a, you know, a team right now that's on to come up a young, exciting football team. The sky's the limit. I feel like uh, Kevin Stefanski is definitely the answer for you all with offensive innovation. Sure. Seems like he's bringing the best out of Baker as well as that offense. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing what the Browns can do this season. Hopefully they can go ahead and win the North because, um, you know, I still feel like there's some holes with a lot of these teams out there in the North, including those Steelers. So. Man, I'm Looking so excited too. Yeah, I, I'm really hopeful. Um, I'm excited about the holes that we filled on the Browns team, plus yeah. all the offensive pieces that you know we have coming back and adding a healthy OBJ. I think it's uh, the sky is the limit. You still got to go win the games. You can't win them on paper, though. Right. So. <laughs> That's true. That's, def- that's definitely true. But good luck to you all, and also good yeah, luck to you. Dynasty owner. Thank um, you. Looking forward to that. Get that GM feel. Uh, get involved with DynastyOwner.com. Once again, DynastyOwner.com. Tim, thank you so much for your time and uh, look forward to speaking to you maybe in the middle of the season. We start talking Absolutely. a little bit more about, about Dynasty Owner and uh, talk about Yeah, we'd love to come back football. and just talk, uh, just talk football in general. Oh, yeah. it's, it's so much fun. Yep. And um, yeah, appreciate it. All right. Appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you.